The fact that you get a dedicated review on these new Glam Light powders can mean two things. Either they are so good that all my wounds are healed, that all the grudge that I held against Glam Light is poof, vanished, or they are so bad that they need to get another, I don't know, rambling, ranting video. Let's find out here. So these are the new Glam Light Bake and Set Powders. I talked about these in a You Don't Need That Shit, where I said that I have very, very strong, very strong Beauty Bakery vibes, and a lot of you agreed. And also, I have strong Huda Beauty vibes because they're called the Bake and Set. Huda Beauty ones are called the Easy Bake and Set Powders, so what, what should I tell you? But at the end of the day, it's a setting powder. It's a finely melt setting powder that you can bake with, so you cannot reinvent a powder. It is what it is. I decided to get two shades, translucent and the pink one with whatever strawberry shortcake is. I think it's a comic. I don't know. Not a thing in Germany, so I have no clue. If you follow me on Instagram and or TikTok, which you definitely should do, you saw me already using them in a first impression video. Um, I just didn't upload it here on the YouTube shorts because I was not able to edit them down to a minute. So YouTube, please give us at least 90 seconds. I, I can't deal with the 60 anymore. I don't know where I should start with these. Um, you know what? I recorded demos for the powders. And in those demos, I already say a lot of info. So I think let's do the demos first. So that you have a bit of a context, what I'm wearing in those demos, I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just grabbing here everything because you know me, I am so not prepared for videos. The under eye concealer combo that I always wear is um, containing the Rare Beauty Positive Light Under Eye Brightener. Then I am currently using the Becca X Smashbox um, Brightener, Under Eye Brightening Corrector in Fair Light. That's like the base combo. And for concealer, I for these demos used in both demos, the Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer in the shade N1. So let's head over to the demos. So my concealer has been sitting here quite a while since I did the rest of my face and I first take a sponge and I just smooth out any creases that appeared. And I'm starting with the translucent one. And I take my powder puff, I grab some of the powder and I tap out whatever is too much here in the lid. And then I press it on the under eye area. Same for the other eye. And here it is on both eyes. I don't know if you can tell this because of the lights, but when I look into the mirror, I see a warmish yellow cast on my under eye. To demo now the pink one, I'll smooth out first my concealer. I always do this. I apply this before I apply any cream products. Wait, let it settle in, and then I smooth it out. And I do the same. I pick up here some on the puff. And then there's still a bit powder in the lid. I just tap it off here and then I press it on the under eyes. And same for the other eye. And here it is now applied on both under eyes. I think the pink powder does not leave any pink cast. It is a tad bit brightening, but not too intense of a brightening effect. So I prefer it color-wise a lot over the translucent one. So if you saw now my shorts or no, the reels and the, the TikTok videos about these powders, you probably think, hey, where is the puff? The puff that comes with these powders, I tossed. Because my problem actually with application in the beginning were the puffs. These tiny triangle shits are not good. Honestly, I'm sorry. I don't know. If, if you are happy with these, maybe you have magical under eyes. On me, these puffs never work. They are way too dense, way too small. They, they just apply too much powder in the same area and I do not bake. So maybe if you're a baking girl, maybe that works, but I don't. 
I just sat with them. So I kept on using them, as you saw, with my own puffs. These that you saw in the demos, for example, are the Trick Well puffs. They have small and big ones. This was the big one. Let's talk about the translucent powder because this is now the powder that after this review will leave my collection again because, and I said it in the demos, this is not translucent. I'm sorry, Glam Light, what did you think translucent is? This is not translucent. You can literally see the yellowness of this. This is a yellow powder. It is not translucent. I'm very, very sorry. Um, let me just apply this here. Very, very heavy. I hope that the camera is not washing this out into a white because this is definitely more so in, I don't want to say it's a yellow banana shape because it's clearly not. It's like an eggshell -y shade. It is Ecru. I think Ecru is, is the right name, but it's not translucent. Let me, let me show you a translucent one. This is the RCMA Original No Color Powder. This is translucent. This is trans-fucking-lucent. Look at this, and now let me apply this here next to it. Again, I have no clue if my camera will pick up the difference between these. If not, just believe me, there is a big, big difference between this one, that is a true translucent, and this from Glamlight. That is not translucent because it is slightly eggshell tinted. You might say now, hey, but where's the problem? The problem is when I use a translucent powder. I want to have a translucent powder. When I use a pink powder, I want to have a pink powder. When I use a yellow powder, I want to have a yellow powder. There is a reason why I do this. And for my skin tone, there is a reason why I do not use yellow under eye setting powders because they look on me weird. They do not work with my skin tone. So by picking up a translucent powder, I expect a translucent powder that has no weird color coming through. This is not it. I am very, very disappointed in this. I'm very sad because they are so much powder for so little money. I paid, I think for me, they are $15.95 plus shipping and taxes. So I think I come without the shipping to a price of like 17 or 18 euro and you get 30 or 35. By the way, fun fact, the translucent one does not have a sticker here on the packaging, which is a bit weird. Are they not? Um, I think they are supposed to have one. The strawberry shortcake has one, 35. So you have 35 grams of product in this for me for under 20 euro. Do I have any other product for under 20 euro with so much product in there? No, I don't because I don't even have an under eye setting powder that has 35 grams of product in it. So it is a good bargain. It's just the color. And in my, let me just close the RCMA one because I already see it like dust and everywhere. The problem is that the translucent powder is also dry. I don't know what exactly it is. It was not as dry when I applied it with my own puff, but with the puff that was with that, it a complete dry mass, like crusty dry mass. So the translucent one will actually leave my collection now because I, I can't get along with this. I can't. It is definitely the shade because it's not translucent. The pink one though, y'all, you have no idea how much I love this. And I say this, although I'm still a bit pissed with Glam Light, but the pink powder is just so freaking amazing. It is the lightest pink. It is so bright and so light and so good. Can we, can I swatch it? It's super hard to swatch a loose powder, not gonna lie. My clothing here is all now full of powder. It is such a light tint of pink in there, although it looks quite intense, it is not. 
It's perfectly brightening. It is wonderfully setting. There is no weird cost on the under eye. If so, there is just the slightest bit of brightening because I do have you, because I already have used under eye setting powders in pink that were just turning my under eye area into a neon sign. This is not. This is just adding the perfect amount of brightness. And I thought it might be helpful if I grab some other pink powders for you so that I can give you a little bit of a comparison. So I have here the Huda Beauty Cherry Blossom Cake. It's, as I said, so hard to swatch a loose powder, but I tried my very, very best. Um, I think Cherry Blossom Cake, when I look at it, has a bit more of a true pinky tone to it, while Strawberry Shortcake could even lean more into a cool toned vibe. I know that's a very, very strong saying about a pink, borderline translucent setting powder, but that's just what I see. I now applied the Tarte Creaseless Under Eye Setting Powder in pink and I don't know, again, how visible is it, but this pink powder has a very strong peach tone to it. So it is not my favorite. I don't really enjoy the pink version of this powder, but it's fine. But it is more peach than pink. And then I also have the Danessa Myrix, uh, what are they called? The Evolution Powder in the pink shade. I applied it here above that one. This is color wise or brightness wise, I would say the closest to the pink one. And if future me is editing this video and I will have to edit basically a handful of nothing, I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize. I did my best to swatch these. So what I want to tell you basically is that these powders are good, but I feel like depending on the shade, they have mixed qualities. The translucent, translucent one was very, very dry. This one is not, there is no dryness coming through. I prefer this over the other one. And if you are in the same skin tone as I am, so for orientation, I am a MAC NC10. My perfect concealer shades are something like the um, N1 from Natasha Denona, but I also like to wear our N1 if it has to be a bit more brightening. Today for this look here, for example, I am wearing the House Labs concealer in the shade 01 Fair Neutral, but I can also wear 04 Fair Neutral. So you have an orientation. Makeup Amari concealer, I am a 120. Then the um, faux filter from Huda, I am Marshmallow 1.3. G in Hourglass, I wear the shade Birch. So I think these are enough examples of concealer shades to wear um, for my skin tone or for you to compare this if you're similar to mine. And if you like good pink powder, honestly, I have nothing bad to say about this and I can give it a good recommendation, but skip translucent one if you do not want to have a yellow cast on your under eye. What do you think? Have you tried these new Glam Light powders? Are they interesting to you? Or do you think we are a bit like overdone with the pink powders? Let me know down below. I'm very, very curious what you think about these. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out any videos and cool reviews. And if you do not have an opinion on these powders, then comment, comment, um, to, you know, to push the algorithm. Um, comment strawberry. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.